Good morning guys and welcome back to, what is it, Wednesday's video here at Bearham Engines. Right guys, so it's Cosworth morning this morning. I've got three sets of pistons that I've got to put valve pockets in. I've only got one more to put the inlets in here, but you can see we've got two sets of second hand ones which are really good second hand ones, believe it or not. And um, the customer wants to keep them in case he does a build on anything else or we put liners in anything else in the future. Um, so I've got a brand new set of one mils over here. Um, we're all working on the same job at the moment. John is grinding a spare crank that we've just got to balance on its own for the Cosworth. That's a standard crank actually, but unfortunately it's about three thou down on the big ends. Uh, so we've got a brand new set of one mils, just put the inlets in, just got to do the exhaust pockets. Isaac is over on the mill there, he's finishing balancing that Cosworth crank that's going with the one mil pistons I've got to do a dummy build on, he's just um, making some new dowels for the flywheel at the moment. Um, and these are two sets of standards, so you can see that they've been modded in the past, they're both two different types, um, but I said while we're at it, you can see here where the inlet valves have been hitting at some point. Um, and the same with the exhaust and that is pretty standard stuff with the standard Cosworth pistons um, you only got to get a bit of valve bounce or skim the head a bit too much in the, in the past and that's what you get so the same here look you can see there so what I'm going to do is just I've just eased them out um, do them as the, at the spec that I normally do them so we'll just do this last one on the inlets We'll turn them all around, do all the exhausts, um, and they are all pretty much done. We've got another set in there for him, but they, unfortunately, are no good. The top ring land is worn, so if you sort of get the piston ring and move it up and down, if it moves, then it means that land's worn and it's just going to pump oil, so no good at all, that. So, we'll start on the zero there, and I normally go, as I said to you before, five mil deep. Um, it's my cutouts are, if you actually have a look at them compared to other people's, they're a slightly, slightly overkill really. I use a, a bigger cutter and I go sort of deeper than everyone else's. And the reason for that is that the amount of other people's pockets that I've seen that just literally are not, um, they're just not big enough really and they certainly don't go near enough to the outer edge so we've seen it many a times where you've only got to get a, even with a standard valve you've only got to get a, a tiny bit of guide wear and you can see where the valve has been hitting the back of the cutout so I go that extra bit bigger and then if you want to run bigger valves in the in the future in the head all you've got to do is go through the head and do that and you haven't got to start taking the pistons out and the same with the depth really you can run as larry a cam as you want with my cutouts so from the zero, we just go 40, 40 mil over, and five mil deep again. Just to that zero, wind it off, wrap it down, and there we go. They look old, big, meaty cutouts, but they will do the job. All right, mate. All right. You balancing rods? I am indeed, yes. Nice. So, for anyone watching that hasn't seen me do this, we've got the rods here. So, first process when we're doing the rods, obviously clean them up. And then we torque up the, uh, the bolts to the, the, the spec, which is on these 45 foot pounds. Then we do the sizing. Okay, so we get the size as we want them. As I've said to you before, these are a set of Cosworth rods that we're doing for this one mil oversized block, the one you're balancing the crank for. Yeah. Um, these rods are never right, never had a, a, rod, a set of rods that, that are right for the Cosies. So we've took these out to sort of top limit on the diameter. Yeah. Um, next step is to balance them end for end. So we always do the big end first. Okay, so the way we do that is we've got a set of dollies here. We find one that sort of fits. Uh, you put the dolly for the big end on the scales and zero it. And then you set the rod up as sort of parallel as you can, okay, by adjusting this. And you want the, the, the sort of 
dollies in the centre of the small end and the big end, so it's not trying to pull it over one way or the other. All yeah. right. Then what we do is we lay them out with the heaviest first and the lightest down here, and then we take off. We match every one to the lightest one. All right. So all we do we do that by just removing a bit of material wherever we can. It's not going to affect the strength of it. So we've done that. Now we're doing the small ends. Okay. Cool. So what we do is we change the dolly over to the other side. Zero the scales, and you can see that now. That rod is sort of sitting parallel. You want this here as true to 12 o'clock as you can. All right, and just make sure that it sort of goes to the same every time. You see that's 195.6 grams. The lightest one over here is 195.1 so we're aiming about 195 okay so all we're going to do now is just grind a little bit more off the end of this small end you see there's plenty of meat there we'll do it on the grinder pop our safety glasses on mate very good idea sporting the new Barham engines hoodies oh look at them with our new logo on how do you like them oh, i love them mate good and i'm not got my shorts on anymore no safety boots are on order They'll be here very soon. And we just take a little bit off either side. See that? Lovely. And it's as crude as that, really. See, we've gone slightly over there, which is my fault. So all I'll do is just put that as the lightest, take a little bit more off this one. We're getting there, mate. Getting there with that. What are you doing? Balancing your crank? I am, yeah. We'll swap over cameraman then. You can right, show me what cool. you're doing. Right. So this is the crank that's going in that Cosworth. I've basically got to do a dummy build and just um, tighten up the crank once it's been polished. So I, I balanced the crank, didn't I? Yeah, you done the crank. Is it all right? Uh, yeah, it's fine, yeah. So I just um, put that front pulley on and done that. Cause yeah. Is that you far don't... out? Uh, no, it's about 10 out on there, so... No ideal. Not far at all. And then this flywheel was mega. Have that you was... faced the flywheel? Yeah, faced the flywheel. And it was right out, was it? Proper out, yeah. What was that out? It was way over 100. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there you go. Just goes to show, doesn't it? Yeah, massively out. Uh, yeah, just got to bolt this down. So just right bolting the clutch it. cover on and then you'll... So, yeah. Like Isaac said, these can run, they look like they run dead true, but obviously because he's faced it, you've took a massive amount of material off a big diameter, um, and it was right off the scale, which off the scale on this, bear in mind this turns at 400 RPM, you'd be able to feel that. So you imagine the thing at seven grand, it's gonna be trying to shake that engine to bits. Right, mate, we've got the clutch cover bolted on. Yep, um, so we'll spin that up and so the flywheel's all balanced. Yeah, flywheel's so balanced. The yeah. So you can see that clutch that it looks visibly like it's spinning pretty true, doesn't it? Yeah. It's about 50 out on there. It's out about 50. It's enough really, isn't it? Yeah. It's enough for it to be noticeable in the car. It's right? about 28. Cool. We'll stop that then. Get drilling some holes. Start drilling, yeah. Hopefully it don't end up like a colander, so everyone comments <laughs> saying it's completely useless. Got that on 28. So that means we've got to take some weight out there. Ideal, we'll leave you to that. Yeah. Right, so this is the 2.2 Transit, um, the one I contradicted myself in a few videos ago saying we wouldn't get involved with. <laughs> um, Isaac stripped it yesterday, and uh, what have we found, mate? Anything interesting? Well, the main attraction is uh, this nice big crack Ooh, right look through at the that. piston crown. Oh, it is all the way through. Yeah, it's uh, broken this oil control ring as well. I think Very it comes good. right down there. Oh, it does as well. Yeah. I don't think I've seen one that bad Fair before. Crack. Nearly cracked it in half. Mm. But everything else with it looks really good, to be honest. What, the crank looks all right? Crank, look, yeah, looks all right. I don't think John's measured it yet, but... 
The bores seem to look all right. There's a little well, bit there. of wear up the top, but yeah. I've ordered 0.5 pistons, so that should clean at that. But all the head and everything else and the bearings, even the bearing in that one is absolutely fine. Yeah. So that is, do we think that is a, like a renowned injector issue? Probably. I think so. So yeah, we've seen these transits with cracks in the piston, not quite that bad, I must admit, but usually that blew a hole or it wipes down the skirt. The wiping down the skirt is the worst thing you can do because then the rings jam in and damage the bore. Um, and we, worst case, you have to put a liner in the block. But, um, but yeah, so everything else seems to be all right. All looks pretty good. All looks pretty good, apart Other from that, the yeah. big crack <laughs> in the piston. But yeah, quite unusual that. It's almost cracked it in half. So yeah, as I say, we don't mind getting involved with the odd diesel, like the transits, the sprinters, um, providing simple. that it is a reputable garage that we know mm. that is going to be putting it back together and do exactly what we ask them to do, like renew the injectors and make yeah. sure the EGR valves all um, hunky-dory and all that. But um, yeah, pretty standard stuff. So yeah, quite lucky really. It hasn't even damaged that bore that it was in. What was that, no. number three? Yeah, number three. I did one. see a comment in the last video actually that I put about this and he said I wouldn't mind betting it's number four, but there's no rhyme or reason with these. We've seen no. these transits before um, because if you have a look at, they've got a, a tapered small end and they run a, a quite a meaty uh, bronze bush in there. Uh, we've seen it before where the bronze bush is actually gone and there's no sign of it anywhere and the piston's just flapping about on the top of the rod. So piston issues all round with these transits, I'm afraid. Yeah. But we've ordered all the bits. Most of the bits are over there. Um, pistons should be arriving. Well, they should have been here today, but looks like they ain't. Um, but we'll get that block cleaned up. Should be Reboard, fairly, refaced. Fairly quick turnaround. Fairly quick turnaround. You've nearly done the head, have you? I've just finished it now. Good. So, so yeah, standard stuff. Well, there we go for another video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, done a couple of technical ones now, so hope you're learning more and more each time. Um, yeah, bit of a strange one with the transit. Um, just goes to show how important these injectors are now um, and why we don't mess about with getting recon injectors. Just put brand new injectors in. Um, comp can't emphasize enough you just have to if you're thinking about doing the engine you've just got a budget basically up to about another grand for a set of injectors but yeah you can see the extra load that it puts on these pistons to crack them blow holes in them blow the small end bushes out and all the rest of it but yeah thanks ever so much for watching guys until another one um we will see you then take it easy cheers bye